this is a example similar to task 2 for what you want to get. I think we want on task 2 you actually get the 3 bit type of counter and uh, I'm not going to disclose whether it's synchronous or asynchronous. But the one we have up here is going to be a synchronous 4 bit counter uh, as identifiable by the clocks being linked together and the actual use of the AM gates to help with the sequencing of the numbers. But we're going to look at how we test this using the logic analyzer. So a couple of things I need to still set up is I need to actually put a clock still into this circuit. So hop on to my signal voltages clock. I'm going to need to paste one into this circuit here. And connect up obviously one side to ground, other end to the clock signal. And I'll place it at about 50 hertz so we can actually visually witness what's happening. It's actually easier to see. Uh, so if we just run the circuit, first of all, the seeds operation, um, maybe a smidge quick just to actually witness fully. Let's go down to 30 to begin with. So if you see all four lights are off and then it counts up in binary effectively with the least significant bit being on the left hand side and your most significant bit being on the right hand side, which is obviously the opposite to how you typically write numbers, but it's how the circuit's built. And you see the flashes of lights that may appear random to you, but in actual fact, it's actually counting up in binary. So if you start off with them all off like such, we get zero, 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 zero effectively. And then as the first bit activates, this far left hand probe labeled X1 then activates and goes to one, zero, zero, zero. So if the light's on, it's a one, the lights off to zero. Then it counts to two. So two in binary would be one zero, right? In binary. Now in ours, because everything swaps left to right, one zero becomes zero one. So what we're seeing is X1 goes off, X2 goes on, and then X3 and four, they're still off at that point. So you should be able to witness this counting up in binary. There's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then back to zero. So it's kind of quick there still on screen. But you are seeing it goes in an order. And what you should hopefully be seeing is, although you can't see the clock pulse, this X1 is flashing at half the rate at which the clock is activating that. X2 is flashing at half the frequency of X1. X3 is flashing at half the frequency of X2. And X4 is flashing at half the frequency of X3. So basically, every time we go through one of these JK flip flops, the frequency between input and output halves. That's why they're quite often known as frequency divider circuits. And what we're able to do with that is count. We're able to actually make this count in a digital format. And you can see it counting away there. There's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, back to zero. Okay. So it counts from 0, 0, 0, 0, obviously 0, to 1, 1, 1, 1, which is in binary, it's 15. So it counts from 0 to 15, which is 16 individuals, individual numbers. Therefore, it's a four bit counter. Okay. Now, to actually measure and show how this operates, it's kind of hard other than showing the flashes of lights. So we need some sort of tool to be able to do that. The tool we use is a logic analyzer. So here is my logic analyzer. Let's bring it in. Each of the pins on the left hand side correspond to inputs that I'm able to use. Um, I could connect them in pretty much any order, but it obviously makes more sense to put the first pin first output and so on. It would just make your life a lot easier and actually witnessing what's happening. So you just connect each pin in order to the output in order as well. We then have a clock down here so we can go down and connect it to the clock source. So I can now make the logic analyzer run off my external clock. So open up the analyzer. Now by default it probably has the clock as an internal trigger. So flashing away, nothing really seemed to happen. And all of a sudden, after 100 milliseconds, it stopped. All these settings are changeable. So first of all, hit the reverse button just to connect things a little bit easier to see. Obviously, my circuit's still flashing away in the background. You can just about see. Obviously, nothing is running here anymore. I need to set some things up on it. So go to your set. Clock source, tell it that you're using an external clock. Therefore, it's going to use that 30 hertz that I have connected to it as its own clock as well. Leave that as X just in case it's not. Clock rate, that's the internal clock rate if you are running an internal one. So as long as you're clicked on external, you don't need to move this. Pre-trigger samples and post-trigger samples, that's 
do with how long it times for effectively and the threshold voltage. Most of it you shouldn't need to change. Right? It should be fine. So hit accept there and you can sh should be able to stop and restart. You see it sort of goes through the setup phase there and I probably just want to squeeze that in by moving in the clocks per division. What you should now be able to see here, if I move that down a little bit, each flash here as it goes on and off is representative to an up or down region on the digital circuit. So there's this purple one up the top. Every time it goes on, you're seeing the top line and then it goes off, it goes down to the bottom and so on and so forth. You should be able to witness the frequency division. So there is my clock at a given frequency. Here's my X1 at half the frequency of that, X2 again half, half, half. That there flashes every other clock pulse. This flashes every two clock pulses. This one every four, and that one every eight. So what you should be able to do is get to the point at which this cycle goes over and recycles itself. So you should go from zero, 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 zero to one, 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 all within this diagram. And it's quite easy to spot. It's really at the point this last one here goes from off on, and then at the point where it goes off again, you see that one, that one, that one, and that one all go off at the same time. That's where it went from one, 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 one to zero, 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 zero. That's it going back to the start. What you're trying to get captured on your screen here is basically you hit play, and they'll probably all start off eventually here at zero. So there they all are at zero. That's them reset. There's one, there's two, and then you see there's three. So one, one, zero, zero, you're really seeing there. Zero, zero, one, zero. It's four. And you're basically going to witness until the point you see one, 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 then change back to zero, 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 zero. That's the point at which the circuit resets. So there's your fourth bit now going to a one. So we're now in the higher numbers. So that's one, zero, one, zero, which is 10. And we're getting close to the end here. One, one, one. And there's your final one. So one, 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 one. This is now there. There they are. All four go to zero. You can stop your circuit at that point. Take a screen print of that, and then you want to talk about that graph a little bit to be able to show that. Obviously, yours is not a four bit. The one you have is a different circuit, but the same principle applies. You're looking to find the point at which it goes from one, one, one to zero, 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 and be able to demonstrate that as part of your analysis. All right. So that's how to use the logic to analyzer or the digital circuit.